the, the crime of sexual assault in the military is a, a, is a horrific crime. And bias and conflict of interest should have absolutely no part in the decision to prosecute. You're going to hear powerful stories from people who are survivors of this kind of crime in the military, including today from Ariana and Ben. Just a few weeks ago when I was going home to Hawaii, I was sitting next to a young woman who I found out is a wounded warrior. And when she was in active duty, she commanded a group of soldiers, some 600 of them, including one young woman, she said, who was the most just so positive, always smiling, just wanting to serve, and over time, this young woman stopped smiling, stopped being the positive, enthusiastic soldier that she was in the beginning, and th this commander coaxed it out of her, what's going on in your life? She was reluctant to reveal, but it turned out that the NCO was uh, coming into the rooms of the women as they were changing without knocking. So you can, see, you can see that this kind of sexual harassment and other kinds of sexual assaults go on. And when the commander, the female commander that I was sitting next to reported this to her uh, chain of command, the only thing that happened was the NCO was removed from that battalion. And that was it. There's no place in the military that prides itself on good order and discipline to allow this kind of crime to continue. And we are affecting the young men and women who join our forces simply to serve. And for them to be exposed to this kind of behavior, you can only imagine what it does to their, their, their desire to serve. It, it just kills them. And this is why I know that what we're doing, this kind of change, is going to help millions of young people who are entering our service over the years. Mahalo.